midnight falls, the blue light shines bright in Lubbock's historic depot district. Though a local haunt for the living, the bar's employees say it's the dead that really becomes the life of the party. At first, I thought they were all trying to create stories to make me nervous as a new guy coming in here. But uh, soon after, I realized there was somebody else in here. Dustin Six, who began working for the Blue Light more than three years ago, says the bar definitely houses some dead weight, especially after closing time when the crowd is cleared, leaving just the staff and him, the ghost with the most. There's been chairs fall down, people playing pool. Uh, the ball's getting cracked, nobody's in the pool room. They respectfully call him Mr. Peabody, supposedly the spirit of a mechanic who suffered an instantaneous death when a hydraulic lift fell and crushed him in the pool room of the bar sometime during the 1900s when the building served as an auto supply shop. If you're in this room and it's dark and you're by yourself, you're not comfortable. Six says Peabody seems to stick to the pool room, the bar's most active dead zone. But on occasion, he'll venture to other parts of the bar where staffers turn the tricks he plays on them into treats with the stories they tell of their ghostly encounters. I was stalking beer next door and a bottle kept hitting me in the head. I ran around the building and there was no one here, so I left. <laughs> Ryan Murphy says he and his co-workers didn't believe in ghosts until they started experiencing all of the things that go bump in the night, such as a bottle cap to the head, the unexplainable sound of footsteps, and whistling. Peabody reportedly made his presence known to James Moreau one night by scooting stools across the floor of the pool room as the lone bartender stayed late to clean up. When I came over here, just walking around the place, I heard footsteps running along this ramp and uh, you know, I ran around checking all the doors, they were locked. And as I walked back to the other side of the bar, when I went into the pool room, whistling within an arm's reach of me, uh, it was just like, you know, very loud. And I wouldn't think that a ghost would have vocal cords to whistle, but um, there was definitely whistling and there was no TVs on or no music playing or anything like that. These and other experiences have terrified some. If it happens to me, I leave. I hate it. <laughs> I'm a baby. <laughs> I went from being a tough guy to being a scared little girl. And they prompted the crew to wonder if Mr. Peabody exists in reality or just in their imaginations. To answer this question, they've called on CPI, Cap Rock Paranormal Investigations, a group of ghost hunters who quickly move in and set up shop. I think everybody tries to think they're always alone, but sometimes you're not. Ellen Cotton, CPI co-founder and one of two sensitives on this team of seven who claim to have a certain sixth sense for detecting paranormal energy even before a hunt begins. Something's saying I'm not here. <laughs> if that makes any sense, you know, ignore me or, or pretend I'm not here. That's the feeling that I get from it. Fellow sensitive Melissa Smith says she detects two male entities and feelings of anger, sadness, and loss. Whatever happened here, in however many instances it happened, was such happened to such an extent with such strong emotions that the spirit itself is stuck here. Once the team has completed an elaborate setup, the lights turn off, the night vision turns on, and green means go for these investigators who become the paranormal paparazzi, taking pictures and video in hopes of capturing some unusual activity. Flash. Take a look at these two clips shot by an infrared camera positioned in the pool room. The first shows an inexplicable flash of white. The other displays what paranormal experts refer to as an orb or energy light supposedly generated by a spirit. This one jets across the same area where earlier in the night Smith felt she had made contact with an intense energy which seemed to overwhelm her. I know you're here. I can feel you. You're messing with me. Cotton decided to conduct an electronic voice phenomenon session, a method used to capture a spirit's voice on a recording device. She asks, are you touching Melissa? And on playback, she got a response, a man's voice saying no. Are you touching Melissa? We moved our investigation to the women's restroom, where something sure raised the stink when this flashlight turned on by itself. Take a listen, our camera caught this EVP as well. You'll hear Cotton and Smith comment on how the air is cooled. Then you'll hear what sounds like an adult's voice say, open, followed by a child's voice exclaiming, open it, open it. The air is cooler in here, I feel the light on the child. The air is cooler in here too, I was just thinking that. We recorded this possible message from beyond as I stood blocking the door. 
According to CPI members, this and the other evidence they collected over the course of several hours leads them to believe three entities haunt the blue light. A boy, a woman, and a man who employees will no doubt continue to call Mr. Peabody the true blue light special. If they don't want to cleanse the building and get rid of the entities that are here, they can actually just take control of the situation, you know, talk to the entities and let them know, hey, I'm the boss. So apparently these aren't the only spirits present at the blue light. Enough proof to explain the unexplainable for the staff of believers. We tell him, chill out, Peabody, we're your friends. He, he's never harmed anybody. I, he's just mischievous. Certainly a new meaning for the term stiff drink. With photojournalist Aaron Drury, Lindsay Ashcraft, Box 34, News at 9.